Hi there, I'm Eitan, and welcome to Wix Fixer. This is the third video in a series explaining how to get data from an external API and display it on your Wix website. In the previous episode, I showed you how to store keys in your secret manager in Wix and access it from your backend. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to use the Wix fetch in order to fetch the data from the external API. So I'm going to go to our fetch documentation for Wix. And you see here that the first thing I need to do is import fetch. So I'm going to do that right over here. And I am here in the back end of my website. So this is public back end. And this is a special, special module that I created for this function. And this is where I already showed how to get the private uh, API key. If you didn't see that video, uh, you can just check it out. It's the episode before this. So I'm going to import the fetch here on the top level. And fetch is the standard uh, JavaScript way of calling an external uh, API. And in order to do it, I'm going to create a wrapper function, uh, basically a function that within it we will fetch the data. So I'm going to say export const. And this is going to be a function that I'm going to call get characters. Because essentially what we're doing here in this API call is getting a list of Marvel characters. And this is going to need to be an async function because fetch is an async asynchronous action. Okay. And then we, in here, we need to actually do our fetch. So if you check out the Wix documentation, you'll see that they use fetch and then dot then, but I'm going to be using async await in when I write my code, but you can do it both ways. You could use fetch dot then, or you could use async await. So right over here, I'm going to say const response, and this is what comes back from the fetch. And that will be equal to await fetch. And here we are going to put our URL. So let's see how we need to build our URL for this API. And every API will be a little different. Uh, but in general, what we'll have is, let me find that documentation that we need over here. So we need the service endpoint. Okay, so this is basically the domain that we're going to be using for the API. So I'm going to copy that over and just paste it right over here. So I'm going to make a new constant. I'm going to call it URL. I'm going to say that this for now is equal to our, and I'm going to make this a secure call. So I'm going to erase the parentheses here in front of the yes, gateway.marvel.com. And then what we need to do is add here the slug for the specific uh, API that we want to call. So if we take a look here, at the documentation. What we're going to be using here is this public characters. And this basically fetches a list of Marvel characters. And this is a get call. So I'm going to click here to see the full documentation here. And for our URL, basically all we need to do is copy over this v1 public characters. Okay, so I'm just going to copy it from right over here. And it's copying it here with the get, so I might need to erase that. But uh, let's just paste it right over here. And I'm just going to get rid of that get. And there we go. OK, so this is the URL that we're going to need to call. But we also need authorization, basically a way of telling our um, API that we are the person that we are that's calling the API because Usually these APIs will either limit the amount of calls you can make, or they'll charge you money if you make a certain amount of calls. And there are different methods of authorization. And if you take a look at the fetch documentation here in uh, Wix, then you can see that there's something called options. So except for our URL, we can also pass options. And this could be the method. So the method could be get, post, patch, etc. And if you're using get, uh, as it says here, it defaults to get. So you don't need to write get. But if we were doing a post, for example, we would need to write post. 
Uh, and headers are often a place where we pass the authorization. So a certain API might require you to pass authorization through the headers. And if you're doing a post, then you'll have a body. Uh, so these are just different options that you can add. And the way you'd add them is by adding them right beside your URL over here in an object. But this specific API doesn't require options. And instead, it has a different method of authorization, which is by using query params uh, or parameters. So if you see over here, we have uh, three parameters that we need to pass in with our API call. One is a timestamp um, or some long string. So basically, it's just a string. For example, here they use one. So that's what I'm going to use as well in our case. So I'm just going to create another constant over here. And I'm going to call it timestamp. And it's just going to be equal to one. OK, you can make it something more complicated Complicated if you want to make your API call more secretive. But since this is just a demonstration, I see no need to do that. And the next thing that we're going to need, sorry for jumping around here, is our API key. And in this case, this API key is the public key. OK, user with a public key of 1234 and API key is the public key. So I'm going to need to add the public key here also as a constant. Public key. And that, if we go back to our portal, is this. And this is not a secret. Okay, this is just like a username. It's not something that you need to store in the secrets manager. You can, just if you feel like it's a more organized way of storing your API. But uh, I'm just going to paste that straight into our backend code as a string. OK, so we have our timestamp and our public key. And the next thing that we need to do is to create a hash. And this is something unique to this specific API. And if we take a look at the documentation here, it says that we need to create a hash using an MD5 digest. OK, so this is a specific way of hashing um, a string. And another API may not require, require any kind of hashing, or it may use a different kind of uh, encoder or something like that. And what I'm going to do in the next video is show you how to install a external a NPM package and to create this hash. But for now, I am just going to go over here, and I'm just going to say that we need a hash. So I'm going to say let hash. And for now, I'm not going to populate that hash. And now let's add these to our URL. So we're going to have here, first we're going to have, the way we add queries is by doing question mark. And then we say the name of the query. So we had timestamp. And since I'm using a template literal here, I could just say equal and write timestamp here. And then we add more query params using the and symbol. So and, and then the name of the parameter here was API key. OK, so I'm just going to copy that over. And then here, I'm going to store, I'm going to write our public API key, public key. And last but not least, we have our hash which was called hash, and that will be our hash. Okay. Then what we need to do is to pass this URL into our fetch. Okay. And after we get back our response, we are going to need to convert it to an object. So usually, uh, not usually, but different uh, API calls can return the data in different ways. And you can look at the API documentation to see how this will return data. But the most common one from what I've seen is JSON. And in order to convert that JSON into an object, we're going to use something called the .json method. So what I need to do here is say const character list. Why did I spell character so weird? Uh, is equal to response dot json and this will convert your 
response into JSON. And this also needs to have the await key before it because this is also a promise. And then we are just going to console.log our character list. Okay, so this is the basic way that you will set up a fetch. And again, I'm going to tell you in advance, I'm going to run this code and it is not going to work because we haven't created our hash yet, which is what I'm going to show you in the next video. But I just want to show you how it looks when we call the API. So I'm going to run this code and the API was called. And this is our response. Okay, so we have invalid credentials because hash time sag something something is invalid. Okay, and this makes sense. Uh, and this is an error that comes back when something goes wrong with your API call. So that is how to set up a basic fetch. And I know that it's a little disappointing because the fetch didn't work in this video, but if you watch the next video about how to install an NPM package and to create this hash, then you will see this API call working. So if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you next time in the NPM video.